Andrew? We, we got a couple of questions on this topic. Um, you said in an interview on CNBC that you had bought shares in JP Morgan for your personal account. Can you explain how you decide to make a personal investment versus one in your role as a fiduciary for us as shareholders of Berkshire? And while you're at it, could you please share some names of stocks you've recently bought <laughs> for your own account? Well, the truth is I like Wells Fargo better than I like JP Morgan, but I, but I also, and we're buy, we, we bought and we're buying Wells Fargo stock, and that takes me out of the business of buying Wells Fargo, so therefore I, I go into something that I don't like quite as well, but that I still like very much. And uh, uh, that's one of the problems I have is that, that I can't be buying what Berkshire is buying, and, uh, and I've got some money around, and therefore I go into my second choices, or into tiny little companies like I did with Korean companies and that sort of thing. But my best ideas are, are all in Berkshire, that I can promise you. <laughs> Charlie? Charlie's bought real estate, too, and different things, and to avoid that problem. Yeah, but basically, the Munger family's in two or three things only. Well, uh, diversification is my idea of not something I have practically no interest in, except as it happens automatically in a big place like Berkshire. Uh, I rejoiced the day I got rid of a quote, you know, a stock quoting machine. And, and uh, I like this buy and hold investing. It's a lovely way to live a life and you deal with a better class of people and, and it's worked pretty well for all of us so and I don't think you need to worry about where you or inside investments his investments through Berkshire are so huge and those are so small relatively that yeah. if that's your main problem in life you have a very favored life well if you have 98 and a half percent of your money in Berkshire and you really are trying to do your thinking about what's best for the one and a half percent, you're a little bit crazy. <laughs> you should be thinking about Berkshire, which I can assure you I, I do. But that, you know, there could be... And he, and he does like Wells Fargo better than yeah. J.P. Morgan. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And we have 400 and some million shares of Wells Fargo in, in, in Berkshire. And I think, I, I, I like J.P. Morgan fine, obviously, and, uh, but uh, I know Wells better. It's easier to understand. Uh, uh, so, you know, we'll, we, well, we, 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 we bought Wells Fargo in the first quarter. We bought Wells Fargo last year. We, we bought it an awful, a lot of years. And, uh, uh, if I wasn't managing Berkshire, you know, but instead was sitting with my own money, I'd have, I'd have a lot of money in Wells Fargo and I'd probably have some money in J.P. Morgan too. My question is, how do you value declining businesses? You were talking about the encyclopedia business brought down by Encarta, or retailing disrupted by Amazon and others, by comparison shopping. How do you value declining businesses? Want me to answer that one? They're not worth nearly as much as growing businesses. <laughs> well, but they can still be quite valuable if a lot of cash is going to come out of them. Yeah, general, generally speaking, it pays to stay away from declining businesses. Uh, yeah. it's, it's very hard. You'd be amazed at the offerings of businesses we get where they say, you know, it's, I, I, I'm going to upset Charlie, but they say, you know, it's only six times EBITDA. And, and then they project some future that doesn't have any meaning whatsoever. Uh, if you really think a business is declining, most of the time you should avoid it. Now, we are in uh, several declining businesses. You know, the newspaper business is a declining business. We will pay a price in that business. We do think we understand it pretty well. We will pay a price to be in that, but that is not where we're going to make the real money at Berkshire. The real money is going to be made by being in, in growing businesses, and, and that's where the focus should be. I, I would never spend a lot of time trying to value a declining business uh, and think, you know, I'm going to get one free, it's what I call the cigar butt approach, where you get one free puff out of the th cigar butt that you find. Uh, uh, it just isn't, it, 
the same amount of energy and, and, and intelligence uh, brought to other types of businesses is just going to work out better. Uh, and so we, our general reaction, unless there's some special case, uh, is to avoid new ones. We, we're, we're playing out certain uh, declining businesses uh, by their nature. But, you know, we, we, we started with declining businesses. We started with textiles in, in New England, and uh, we tried U.S.-made shoes, and we, we've... Uh, we've uh, department store in Baltimore. Department store in Baltimore, Howard and Lexington Trading Street. Trading stamp company. We're a specialist in that. Yeah, we, we, we have one business. We have one business that did a million, uh, 120 million or so of sales in 1967 or 8. And what we do last year, about 20,000? Yes. 20,000, yeah. I, I presided over it myself. Yeah. And, well, I, I, I want to say I helped. I mean, <laughs> he didn't do it all by himself. No, no, no. I mean, I sat there in the location and watched the... It, it, we thought of bringing the sales chart down here and turning it upside down. Uh, uh, to impress you, but uh, but Charlie is still in charge of this business. He's in, and and uh, uh, I can't get him to sell it, but make me an offer. <laughs> but if you think what came out of those three declining businesses, all of which failed, it's so many billions you. It's, it's hard to imagine how, how much came out of them. Yeah, we're, not, we're, not, we're not looking for an opportunity to do it again. No, but it was not, in 1966, <laughs> maybe we should, because in 1966, Sandy Gottesman, one of our directors, and Charlie and I, we put $6 million into a company. We called it diversified retailing, although we only had one operation, but it's not, you know. Uh, it was kind of like Angelo Mazzillo calling his one location, you know, in New York countrywide mortgage at the time. Uh, and we, we bought a department store at Howard and Lexington Street. Now, in our defense, I would have to say there were four department stores at Howard and Lexington Street in Baltimore, and all four of them are gone. Uh, but that $6 million has turned into about $30 billion, uh, starting with that. Failed business. Failed, failed business. business, yeah, yeah. And of course, Blue Chip Stamps was another example of that because yeah. that, that was another company that, that uh, and, and then of course Berkshire was the textile business. So we, uh, we were sort of masochistic in the early days. <laughs> Becky. Ignorant too. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <I> was, <laughs> that was the word that came to mind, but I didn't really like to use it. 